polynomial functions, there is a thinking and communication problem. When 10x cubed minus 40x is divided by 5x plus a, the quotient is 2x squared plus bx minus 4, and the remainder is 4a. Find the values of a and b. So that's a very interesting problem, and I found this in the test paper. My students, some of them, didn't really understand the question. They really got to the first step, but it was difficult to find the solution, and you'll find it why. So here is how we should do it. Let's use the division statement. When this is divided by this, quotient is this and remainder is that. That means our equation is that 10x cubed minus 40x is equal to 5x plus a times 2x squared plus bx minus 4 plus the remainder which is 4a. Is that okay? So that is our division statement. Now from here we can expand the right hand side and then see what we get. We get 5x times 2x is 10x cubed, 5x times bx plus 5bx square and with minus 4 we get minus 20x. Let's multiply with a now all the terms. So we get plus 2ax square plus abx minus 4a and plus 4a from there, good. Let's simplify it. So we got x cubed term as 10x cubed and in x squared terms we have 5b from here and plus 2a. So I'm writing 5b plus 2a as my coefficients for x squared. And in x terms I've got minus of, let me write minus, since here we have minus, I'm writing minus outside, minus of 20. And for x, we have plus ab. Since I've taken minus outside, I'll write minus ab here and x, right? Minus 4a plus 4 is 0, right? So that is what I get on the right side. Now clearly, if this has to be equal to this, then their coefficients should be equal. 10 and 10 are equal. Oh, that's perfect. We are interested in finding two variables. We are also interested in finding two equations. Until and unless we get two equations, we can't really solve, right? So, without using parameters, yes. Okay. Now, x square coefficient is what here? Zero. So, what we can do is, we can use this as an equation. Say 5b plus 2a equals to zero. Because there is no x square term here. And there is one in the right hand side. So, that should be zero, right? How about x coefficient? x coefficient here is minus 40. I have written minus, so it is just 40. So I'll write 40 here, and with that minus I have 20 minus ab here. So we got 20 minus ab uh, should be equal to 40. If 20 minus ab is 40 and 5b plus 2a is 0, then the right side is equal to left side. That's what I'm trying to say, right? So that's how it is. So we'll try to solve these two equations. We've got two equations. Let's number them, right? Let's say this is equation 1 and this is equation 2. Now, from equation 2, we can write down what A or B is in terms of one another. So, we will do, we can write, we can take AB to this side. And so, okay. And we write 20 minus 40 equals to AB. Oh, it doesn't matter. So, 20 minus 40 equals to AB which is minus 20. So minus 20 equals to, we can write in terms of A or in terms of B, right? So let's say, so A equals to, we write A, B for the time being, right? So from here, we can say, what is B in terms of A? So B in terms of A is minus 20 over A, is it okay? So this is what we get, the relation between A and B from equation 2. So we can plug this value here and solve for A, okay? So let's do that part. So I'm, let's say this is my equation number 3. So I'm using equation 3 and 1 now. So I have 5 times minus 20 over A plus 2A equals to 0, correct? Now that means minus 100a 
4 a plus 2 a equals to 0. Perfect. So I can write this as 2 a equals to 100 over a, right? So I'll cross multiply now. So a square equals to 100 over a, 2. A is equals to square root of this, square root of this, plus minus square root of 100 over 2. Is that okay? So that is what I get as a value of A. So this, I can use value of A as plus 100 over 2 square root or minus, right? When you do square root, you have to write both, right? So let's assume that, let me make further divisions of my page. Correct. And I'll make two more here. And let me use a different ink. Okay, now if I say my a is square root of 100 is 10, right, and square root of 2. So I'll write this as a equals to, let us say, plus 10 over square root 2, or a equals to minus 10 over square root 2, correct? So these are two possible values of a for me from here. Now, this part we did using equation 1 and 3, right? And we got this as 4, correct? Now, this is our 4, correct? Now, what we can do is, we can use 3 and 4 and find B, correct? So, from 3 and 4, let's find what B is. So, B is equal to minus 20 over A. So, instead of A, I'll write 10 over square root 2, correct? Which gives me minus 2 square root 2. That's one value of b. The other value of b is when I take a as minus 10 over square root 2. So I get b as minus 20 over minus 10 over square root 2, correct? So from here, minus minus cancels out. So I get 2 square root 2. So these are my two values of a and b. And therefore, I can write down my solution now. Perfect. So my solution is, so the answer here is, if a is this, so one answer is 10 over square root 2. Uh, okay, I should write a equals to this. It's not a kind of coordinate, right? Okay, so the answer is if a equals to plus minus 10 over square root 2, then b equals to, so if it is plus, then b is minus. So I'll write minus plus of 2 square root. I hope you get it, right? So that is what our answer is for this interesting problem. Now the critical step here is, of course, this step. Making two equations from this, this is a very wonderful step and that is why this question comes under thinking and communication. What are we communicating? We are communicating that the coefficients of like terms should be same. Right? And don't forget, whenever you do square root, do plus and minus. Okay, Have a good look at it and then it, I hope it helps you in solving such problems in the test. Thank you.